Hello everyone. Let's learn about the second part of nutrition in animal. So intestine are of two types: small intestine and large intestine. Small intestine, as the name indicates, they are smaller in size compared to the large intestine. So small intestine is highly coiled compared to the large intestine, and it is about seven point five meter long. So it is quite long. and after leaving the food from the stomach the small intestine the food enters into the small intestine and the last step of digestion take place here in the small intestine small intestine they have connection with the liver and pancreas so it receive the small intestine the first part of the small intestine is duodenum it receives the secretion or the juice from the liver and pancreas so pancreas and liver these are the glands what we have already learned in the first module so they secrete their juices into the first part of the small intestine so liver is the largest gland and it is situated in the upper part of the abdominal region on the right side now it is uh, able to secrete the bile juice and bile juice it is stored in a small structure called gall bladder which is in the liver which is located near the liver pancreas is the second largest gland and it is cream colored located between the stomach and the intestine so it's located below the stomach pancreas secrete pancreatic juice which can digest carbohydrate fats protein and convert the carbohydrate fats and protein into the simple form so the main role of intestine is absorption so it's a process by which the digested food that will be entering into the blood vessel of the small intestine so in the small intestine there is a finger like projections which is called villi so each villus you can see here the structure they are finger like projections which are present so they are present throughout the intestine this will increase the surface area so that more absorption can occur so in the small intestine complete digestion of the nutrients occurs so this is the structure of the villi so you can see each villus here you can see there is the capillaries is there then this dark purple color you can see it is a artery then there is the vein is present this blue color is a vein and the joint of the artery and the vein is called the capillary so the nutrients enter into the stum uh, intestine and they move into the villi so these blood vessels they will absorb the nutrients this is a large intestine large intestine is larger in size compared to the small intestine so small intestine connected to the large intestine so large intestine depending upon how they are moving they are named like ascending colon transverse colon descending colon then the shape is s shape is called sigmoid colon then the rectum where it is stored and anus so at the junction of the small intestine and the large intestine you can see appendicitis now large intestine also has villi and their main role is absorption of water after absorption the last step is assimilation so this is a process in which the organs of our body utilizes this digested nutrients and they form complex substances so this after digestion the food has been nutrients has been made into simple form and these simple form again are made into complex substances because of which the body the body whatever need needed by the body they make it into a complex substances such as protein or hormones or enzymes and that process is called assimilation so again about the large intestine so any food which is left undigested passes through the small intestine enters the large intestine it's a white tube Length is about one point five meter long. So I hope you remember the small intestine was ten point five meter long. Now the main function of the large intestine to absorb the water and the minerals which are present from the undigested food, 
and the rest of the unwanted materials they move out through the rectum so this process is called ejection which is the last process so what is ejection the process by which the waste undigested food get out of the body through anus so that's all with the digestion in humans next we are going to learn about digestion in animals in grass eating animals the type of food what they eat has large amount of cellulose because plant part is made up of cell wall they have cell wall so it is made up of cellulose so cellulose cannot be digested easily by the animals so for that they have certain different types of bacteria which is present in the stomach which help to digest the cellulose for them so you can see here they have a stomach which is different from the human stomach and they are said to be compound stomach so rumen is a sac like structures which is present you can see here rumen which is a sac like structures which is present between the food pipe and there is a small intestine so all these grass eating animals like cow and herbivores or buffaloes they have the rumen at first when the animal when it is feeding it is not chewing the food it is just swallowing it so this partially digested food will be mixed with the saliva enters into the rumen and they will be present in the rumen and that is called cud now when the animal is resting this cud returns to the mouth and the animal chew it so this cud will contain the enzymes and it will be partially digested so it will be completely digested when the animal is resting by chewing it with the help of its teeth and masticating it so this process is called rumination and the animals who follow this process of swallowing the food at first and then chewing it later are called ruminants so that's about the digestion in animal next we are going to learn about the feeding of amoeba so this is our last topic amoeba is a unicellular organism it has its a small membrane it has cytoplasm a nucleus will be present over it and small vacuoles are present which are round circle like structures present inside the membrane now amoeba they are present in water they are microscopic and they are freely able to move around they can change their shape so we can say that they do not have a particular shape now it has certain projections which are called pseudopodia and the pseudopodia help them to take the food from the surrounding water so if it wants to take the food the pseudopodia will come out of their body and engulf the food and it will be stored in a vacuole called food vacuole so you can see here this is a picture of the amoeba and the, this is the food so this projections more project out and surrounds the food material and it enters into the body and it is stored the food is stored in a vacuole a membranous structure called vacuole and now this vacuole is called the food vacuole inside this food vacuole there will be many digestive juices will be there which will digest the food absorption also occur and the nutrients what they are required will be absorbed into their body and later this vacuole will contain unwanted undigested material and this vacuole will open out and the waste material will go out of their body so this is a simple process to illustrate the digestion in amoeba so amoeba they are aquatic they are present in the water they are present mostly in the stagnant water and they don't have a particular shape they have nucleus cytoplasm and vacuole depending upon the function of the vacuole the vacuole can be said to be as food vacuole if food is present it is called excretory vacuole if their function is, is to excrete the waste material out of their body 
So that's all for today's chapter, Nutrition in Animal. So thank you all.